There it is. Much better alignment. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Love 500, and welcome back to a little compilation on the uh, Project Pop, the one with the sunroof. So this was the one that was down at the paint shop to have the bonnet alignment done, which is okay. It still needs a little bit of fiddling about, um, but it's okay. Not as good as I'd like it, but it'll do <laughs> for the time being. Um, we had a little issue, if you remember, when I was driving it, uh, which I didn't remember hearing when I took it off the transporter and um, took it down the driveway but as you start to roll as you're driving along you get this I could describe it as a grinding noise rubbing noise not quite sure how, how to describe it really um, yesterday I discovered something uh, so I'm gonna show you right now so I've got the wheel off obviously um, you see I've got it in gear at the moment look at this That is completely mullered. I'm not sure what the thread's like, it's a bit difficult to see, it doesn't look fantastic. If I put that on with a gun or with anything else, it just spins. So therefore, that is doing that. So I have got a new drive shaft, which I got for a, a previous car. Look at the state of it. It looks like it's completely stripped, so that's probably why it's not going on. So it's whether this is enough thread there for it to take otherwise I've got to put a new uh, drive shaft on as I say I have got one um, but I'm hoping because the new drive shaft has got the bolt you can see that I mean look at the state of the, the in edges of that bolt obviously you have to bend these tabs back when you take this off so it's obviously had a new drive shaft at some point it's had a new drop link as well so I'm guessing it's had a new drive shaft at some point which is why they've um, taken this off but this Mr. Mr. Wobbly I mean I have seen my slightly wobbly like this before but generally if it's a little bit wobbly once the wheels on it holds it in position but this is obviously not bolted up on there so it's a bit difficult to tell it looks don't look too bad the thread to be honest so I'm gonna get the other bolt out and I'm gonna give it a try and it's just starting to rain the sun's out and it's starting to rain that bizarre um, so yeah I'm gonna give that a go with a bit of luck it will tighten up and it will be fine and that will hopefully cure that horrible noise we shall see right so here we can see this is a good a good nut that's off the new um, drive shaft so I'm going to do this by hand to start with and see if it will bite get us that far I don't want to mess it up so I'm going to try Putting it on with. Actually, let's get a socket wrench on it rather than using that. I'm going to be quite gentle with it. Seems to be going on. Bar. 
do it on that with a bit more leverage. It is still turning. I don't want to mess up the thread. Yeah, not sure about that. I'm going to take it out of gear. I think the best thing I can do is um, take it for a little drive. I don't want to go mad tightening that up. It does seem to be in quite a long way. So I don't think that is anything unusual for it to go in and out like that. <clears throat> right, let's put the wheel back on. that's still wobbly so that obviously isn't on properly is it yeah it's still wobbly so even though that bolt is done up now whereas before it was just loose I can only imagine that the, that the thread is knackered and it's not going up any further so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a little test drive of it drive it out the road and see what happens I don't think it's going to make a blind bit of difference because actually that wheel obviously shouldn't be wobbling like that or rather the hub that's clearly not right so I think it's going to have to have a new um, the new drive shaft on morning 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 welcome back to the channel welcome back to the white pop so this is the one that we with the sunroof the one that we had the bonnet done on i um, got a little bit of work to do on it to get it ready. Uh, as you know, there is an issue with the drive shaft. Um, hopefully, Connor's going to sort that on Friday and hopefully it will drive okay then. Uh, until then, um, it just needs to be cleaned up, really. Uh, wheels need to be uh, tarted up because they've got a bit of curbing on them. Uh, and there's a, there's a few alignment issues with the bonnet still, even though the body shop's done it. But I've, I've just got a little bit of fiddling around. I'll show you that in a sec. So with the bonnet, a little bit of touching up to do there. Um, I've got a little dent there that I need to try and pull out. A couple of little bits to touch up. The alignment's not too bad, but it needs sorting out here a little bit. It's a little bit too high still, or rather the bump is still too low. They use some washers, but they put the washers on the top. When I do it, I always put the washers underneath. I'll show you in a minute when I get the bonnet up. Um, but the wheels are relatively bad. Obviously, I'm going to give the whole car a clean first. Um, and then uh, we'll go over them with a bit of paint. I'm not going to spray them, I'm just going to touch them in with a brush. Uh, got the little bits on the bonnet, uh, on the bumper there to touch in. Got to sort out this little bit of paint here, bit to touch in there. It's just a few bits and pieces, nothing much. It's not in exceptional condition this one, but it has got the benefit of, uh, although it's a pop, of having the alloy wheels, the sun opening sunroof, the blue and me stereo. Uh, and the, the mirrors, silver mirrors and so on, so it's more valuable than a than a standard pop. So all the wheels are a little bit on the curb side, so I'm not going to go mad with them. Just 
just gonna touch them up. Don't say ooh when I say touch them up. <laughs> so let's do that now. I'm just gonna pop the bonnet and I'll show you the uh, the washers that are underneath. So as you can see, they've put the washers on there. I don't know why they've put them this side. Uh, I think he said they made the holes a little bit bigger because it needed to move in and out, but that one you can see is compressed right down, so I need to get that washer and probably another washer underneath. Because so that's gone right down, that bit's up in the air, and then that bit's right flat. So I need to sort that out, get the washers underneath to bring it up a little bit, and bring it forward a little bit. There's always a little bit of jiggery-pokery when you put a new front panel on. You can never get it perfect without... Well, sometimes you can, but more often than not, you have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get it straight and flat. I guess you're never going to get them in the right position. It's amazing how they do in the factory, really, but I suppose it's all done precision with a robot and so on, and new parts, obviously, genuine parts, which clearly makes a difference. But let's get on with it. Anyway, I'm going to give it a good clean first, give it a jet wash, give it a good bucket and sponge clean, uh, and then once we've levered it down and it's dried off, I'll start touching up those little bits of paint and get that bit of bonnet done. Right, car's all nice and clean now. I think that's probably more apt to fall out remover on it. So it's all nice and clean and shi well, shiny-ish. Needs a needs a cutting compound and the the DA polisher. Um, I remembered I've got to fit the bolts in the bumper still as well. And as I said before, there's a few little bits that need touching up. I need to get some tar spot remover on the bottom of the other door and the bottom of this door a little bit and the seal just to get all that out. Um, finish lining up this bonnet properly, touching a few bits of paint as I keep saying. Uh, then we're done really. At least it's clean now. Uh, oh, touch the wheels up again of course. Yeah, see there's loads of bits of tar down there, I don't know if you can see them. There's a couple of little scuffs on it that need um, probably G3 or G10 will get those out. Uh, that's about it, I think. The inside's clean. Seats were obviously cleaned before, and the inside was clean. Um, little things I need to do, like take those screws out and put the proper caps on, so it's got the blue and the yellow caps on. Uh, I may put my little flowers here, like I often do, as you've seen. And of course, a white car wouldn't be complete without my trademark green, white, and red stripes up the side. Let's see if I'm getting the right way around this time. Uh, so I think. That's it. So we'll come back uh, very shortly. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the alignment on the bonnet now. Get those um, washers and get a few more washers in there just to get the level right. And then we'll right, that's the bonnet done. That's as good as I'm gonna get it. So I've put the washers underneath the lip of the bumper on all the way along. I've put an extra washer. That one and that one are fine. There I've put an extra washer just there. And that one I've put two extra washers and I say they've all gone underneath. Um, I could put another one under there but I think that'll do. It looks, it, it does look very very slightly, I'm being a bit, bit finickety or pernickety, finickety, pernickety, whatever the term is. But um, it, it sort of shrieks a little bit because it's got this little chip here but I'm going to touch that in anyway so that don't matter. But I think that's much much better now. Good, that's that bit done. There it is, it's done. All the paintwork touched up. Wheels touched up. Oh, the only thing I haven't done is put the, the wheel cap back on there. So, the wheel touch up isn't fantastic because the wheel touch up paint is a very, very slightly different colour. But it's better than it was. I pulled that little dent out a little bit. You can still see it a, a smidge, but it's as good as it's going to get. All the little bits that were dodgy paint have all been touched up. They don't stick out like a sore thumb. I can see that obviously. Um, I've put me trademark green, white and red stripes on the side. That wheel's not too bad. Replace the, I didn't have any blue um, cover caps on those so I've just used the yellow ones. So I've replaced those. Got gone round it with the tar remover, got all the black spots off. There is a tiny little ding there, but I'm not doing anything about that. I won't be able to get that out. The bumpers are all nice and tight up on where they should be. Gaps are all okay. As we saw a little, little bit earlier, the bonnet gap is much, much better now. 
when it opens and closes fine. I'm not happy with the, with the way, with that line there. Not happy with that at all, but there's not really much I can do about it. It is what it is. Again, you know, if you look at it as a whole, it's a nice looking car. It'll be a great first car for somebody. And it's got the advantage of that opening sunroof. So obviously I say it's done, it's not done because we've got that dodgy drive shaft with the horrible noise that it makes. But apart from that, it's done. It's all clean on the inside. I think I've got to go over the steering wheel one more time. But the fact we've got this opening sunroof is amazing. Very rare. 45,000 miles, seat's clean. This is the one that had the new seat, so it's got a nice decent seat on it. I will give it another clean inside. Steering wheel's a bit grubby where I've had my hands all over it. Um, so I'll give that another going over before I sell it. But it's got to go in for an MOT, so I'm going to phone up now and book in for an MOT for next week. Even though, obviously, we've got the drive shaft issue. Um, I can always cancel the MOT, but I want to get it booked in. So I think overall, it's a nice car. All I need to do is uh, hopefully Connor can uh, do that. Well, not hopefully, he will do it. Drive shaft next week. This Friday, I'd rather not next week. He's going to do it Friday. And then we can, um, hopefully that will sort out the problem. I think it's, it's got to be that. I can't see as any, anything else. There you go. I've got the wheel trim on now. So, with my cat down here. She's going to run away from me. Um, yeah, so, all done. So I'm going to take some pictures of it now, and uh, pictures that I can uh, sell it with, as it will be going up to sale very, very shortly. Well, hopefully very shortly. Yeah. I'm pleased with it. The only thing I'm not pleased about, as I've said, is that gap. Because it's not right. But it's as good as I can get it. Well, and, of course, it went to the garage as well for them to do it. As good as I can get it. So... I look forward to this one going as well. So you didn't think you are going to see the red pop anymore, but I have some news. Just give you a final view of it. This is definitely, definitely the last time you're going to be seeing this car, because I've sold it. I've sold it to one of the uh, channel subscribers named Mark. Um, he contacted me via eBay. He obviously found it on eBay and contacted me. And uh, we had a chat. On the phone described um, exactly where we were with it and um, yeah we've agreed a price and uh, I sorted out the uh, fuel rail problem I've just literally just finished sorting that out there's a funny little moth thing what is that get off not a moth don't know what it is <laughs> um, yeah I sorted out the fuel rail thing so that's not a problem uh, and I bought a inlet manifold because that's the next thing to try which includes fuel rail uh, and so on so i'm giving him that so obviously it's still making the still got the lumpy tick over but mark is happy to get that sorted out himself so i am making a loss on this car not a massive loss but i am making a loss uh, mark lives in plymouth so it's a long way from me and gallin the uh, the usual driver He's taking it down, he's picking it up tomorrow night and delivering it to Mark on Thursday. And he uh, he's charging me £285, which is a good price. Uh, and I'm going arms with Mark on that. So uh, obviously it's because of that I'm making a loss. I would have more or less broken even. But we'll go through the numbers uh, some other time. But uh, yeah, it's all, well, I say it's finished. Mark's going to finish it off. But it's got a great little car here. It runs, as I say, I've finished, I've sorted the 
fuel rail. Um, I've just taken it for a blast up the road and it's fine. Uh, no fuel's leaking. So I used the hot water method. I dipped the end of the pipe into hot water and then it was I was able to push it on to the uh, little peg that goes into the fuel rail. So yeah, so as I say, we're all finished on this. This will be going tomorrow night. And um, as you can see, the white one is out on the drive at the moment. We finished that one off today as far as cleaning it's concerned. Uh, and that needs a, uh, still got, got to have that drive shaft done, which Connor's doing on Friday. Uh, the blue one just needs a clean up inside. That's going for MOT on Saturday and that'll be finished. So that will be going hopefully next week. Uh, and then the white one, I've got to get booked in for an MOT and get that one done. Get that one up for sale as well. So yeah, so as I say, this is the last you'll be seeing of the red pop. I'll be going to a new home tomorrow. So that's where we are on the uh, white pop and the red pop. Um, while I'm here sitting at the computer, I thought I might as well go through the numbers on the red pop, as I'm sure you're all interested. Uh, so as you know, um, during lockdown, I bought this car from um, Grant at Salvage Flippers. He had bought this prior to lockdown, guessing how it was gonna go, no cars on the road, no projects available. So he bought a few cars. He knew I was carless uh, and I needed a project. So he offered me that one at the, uh, the price he paid for it, which was uh, £1,366. That was including his delivery and what he paid for it. £1,366. Uh, delivery from him in Chelmsford to me was £95. Um, I put a new front wing on it, which was in colour at £70. It had an MOT. Uh, when, it, when the MOT was done, it had brake pads and discs. They supplied the um, brake pads. I supplied the discs, so I haven't put the cost for the discs as I can't remember what they cost me, but they're not very expensive anyway. So MOT, uh, supply and fit the brake pads and fit in the discs that I supplied was £110.95. Uh, the cam belt, water pump and the rocker cover gasket was £59.95. Um, I paid Connor £120 for fitting the cam belt. Um, I had to buy a set of manuals for it, uh, which was £15. Uh, the wheel trims were £30.98. The painting, if you remember, the, 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 the shading of the red was off big time. Um, so I had, one, apart from the damage that was repaired on the back wheel arch, we had that complete near side painted, uh, the back painted and blended in onto the driver's side. Um, that cost me £300. Great prices I get, £300. Um, and then we come to, oh, the inlet manifold was £30. Um, so that's it. Uh, so Mark, I advertised it for two two fifty um, with with the problem that it's got. Um, Mark was happy to pay that two two fifty, uh, and then we had the delivery because obviously I'm in Kent and he's in Plymouth. Um, so Gallin is delivering it to him uh, for two hundred eighty five pounds, and I've gone halves on him. I've, uh, I've gone halves on the delivery charge. Um, so Mark paid me. Where are we? 2,400. Uh, and then I will be paying the 285 pounds. So that comes out, I've made a loss of 82 pounds and 88 pence. So Mark knows exactly what the problem is. Uh, he knows I've fixed the fuel rail. He's happy about that. He knows that it drives fine, drives absolutely fine. It's literally just that tick over. So hopefully he can get that sorted. And I will be intrigued to know, and I'm sure Mark will let me know what it was when he does get to the bottom of it. Um, he's got the inlet manifold that I'm giving him, so um, hopefully that will be it. And hopefully there is a there is a crack in it, and it's that that's causing the, the lumpy tick over. But I'm sure Mark will get to the bottom of it, or his mechanic will get to the bottom of it. And um, he's got a great little car there um, for, a, I think, a good price. Um, uh, hopefully he won't have to spend, literally won't have to spend any money on it. Uh, obviously the cam belt's done, water pump's done, uh, the uh, auxiliary belt is done. Um, it's got new spark plugs, it's got new new brake pads, it's got new brake discs. So it's a great little car. So yeah, £82.88 and pence I lost. Say la vie. It's got to, got to go, got to be moved on to the next one. Um, I just, you know, I tried changing so much on it, as you know, 
uh, couldn't get to the bottom of it uh, and I need some I've got too many cars at the moment and I need to move on to the other projects it got on the back burner so I thought I'd stick it on eBay and see what happens and then obviously Mark contacted me um, so he's watched all the videos he knows what the car's like he knows what's what I've done on it he knows what's left to be to be done on it and he's uh, going to be getting that early on Thursday morning so that's it that's it for the red pop you'll never be seeing that again on the channel um, but I will update you once Mark has updated me um, as to how he got to the bottom of it then obviously I will let you know um, the white pop won't be around for much longer hopefully as I say Connor's coming to do the drive shaft on Friday uh, I'm going to ring the garage tomorrow and get it booked in for an MOT hopefully they can do the MOT sometime next week uh, and then it'll be done up for sale um, so that's it for the time being um, we'll be back in the next couple of days on the Blue Lounge, uh, which as you know is going for MOT on Saturday. I'm just going to give it a good old clean up uh, and then that'll be uh, hopefully sold as well. So we're getting somewhere now, thankfully, at long last. Um, it's been a bit of a slog recently on some of these cars, but um, we are getting somewhere now and I look forward to getting another project. Um, we'll talk about what I'm going to decide, what I've decided I'm going to uh, going to get or how I'm going to go about changing slightly the type of car that I'm doing. Still Fiat 500, but I'm sort of changing things a little bit we'll go into that um nearer the time so for the time being once again as always thank you for watching um if you're a casual viewer please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to uh, be notified when we upload new content and so for the time being thanks for watching stay safe see you soon